Dog the Bounty Hunter, Jack the Ripper, and Diana, Princess of Wales, are all on this day. Hey, welcome back to On This Day. Today's August 31st, 2020. It is the 244th day of the year. There is 122 days left. Can't wait. It is the 35th Monday. Today is Overdose Awareness Day. Overdose Awareness Day aims to reduce the stigma associated with speaking about drug addiction. This observance encourages addicts to seek help and treatment. According to the National Center for Health Statistics, over 770,000 Americans have died from drug overdoses since 1999. In 2001, this observance was originated by the Salvation Army's Sally J. Finn in Melbourne, Australia. On this day, many share their stories about their lost loved ones to overdose on social media. Yeah, you know, there was a time where everyone just thought drug addicts were nothing but inner city people, rock stars and celebrities. It's everywhere now. I read this thing like two years ago about a priest that was addicted to Vicodin. That's, you know, it hits everyone. It's too bad. All right, let's see what else has happened on August 31st. 1888, Mary Ann Nichols is murdered. She is the first of Jack the Ripper's confirmed victims. He is believed to have murdered and mutilated a minimum of five women in the Whitechapel and Spitalfields district of London over the course of four months in 1888. Only four months. I heard so much about him growing up, and there's been so many movies and books written about him. you think this would have gone on for like years, but no, four months, that's it. 1907, Russian and the United Kingdom signed the Anglo-Russian Convention by which the UK recognizes Russia's preeminence in northern Persia, while Russia recognizes British preeminence in southeastern Persia and Afghanistan. Both powers pledge not to interfere in Tibet. That's awfully good of them. 1935, the United States tries to remain neutral. In an attempt to stay out of the growing tensions concerning Germany and Japan, the United States passes the first of its neutrality acts. There were four neutrality acts, which ultimately failed. I mean, we ended up in the war. The first imposed a general embargo on trading in arms and war materials with all parties in the war and also declared the American citizens traveling on ships to the area traveled at their own risk. The second said no more loans or credit to any country or businesses involved in the war. The third being the biggest passed a joint resolution outlawing the arms trade with Spain. The fourth kind of went against all that, but it allowed arms trade with Great Britain and France on a cash and carry basis. We we're given no credit on this one because we probably didn't feel they would be around long enough to pay us back. Along with the American citizens and ships were barred from entering the war zone designated by the president. Yeah, that whole thing was a mess. We eventually got involved, obviously, and, you know, the rest is history, as they say. 1939, Nazi Germany mounts a fake attack on a Polish radio station, creating an excuse to attack Poland the following day, thus starting World War II in Europe. The purpose of the attack was to place the blame on another country to avoid being at fault for the war. 1940, Pennsylvania Central Airline Trip 19 crashes near Lovettsville, Virginia. The investigation of the accident is the first investigation to be conducted under the Bureau of Air Commerce Act of 1938. You know, now these days it's the FAA that takes care of all that. 1943, the USS Harmon, the first U.S. Navy ship to be named after a black person, is commissioned. Leonard Roy Harmon was a sailor. He was a mess, mess meaning food service, basically, for those of you that don't know. He was what they call a mess attendant first class. On the USS San Francisco, during the campaign of the Solomon Islands, on Savo Island, there was an attack and he pretty much disregarded everything he was doing that had to do with the kitchen and started in carrying uh, wounded sailors to safety and being shot at and eventually died. But he gave up everything that was going on in the kitchen to help out and start bringing people back wherever they could get their help. I read the whole thing on his actions. It was very interesting. 1988, Delta Airlines flight 1141 crashes during takeoff from Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport, killing 14. Following a clearing from ground control, the aircraft was instructed to line up on the runway and hold for one minute due to the possibility of wake turbulence. Nearly right after takeoff, the plane went down with the tail and the right wing touching the ground, and the right wing basically caught fire. The entire flight lasted a total of 22 seconds, killed 14 people. 1993, Russia completely removes its troops from Lithuania. 1994, Russia completely removes its troops from Estonia. 
1997, Diana, Princess of Wales, her companion Dodi Fayed, and driver Hanuri Paul, I believe his name is, die in a car crash in Paris. It is believed that the car crashed in a tunnel after being followed by paparazzi. Others have said that that high speeds and the driver being under the influence of prescription drugs could have caused the accident. Now, there's a million and one conspiracies out there that apparently she was killed by the royal family and all that. Uh, it's, you know, the conspiracy theories and how weird they get are kind of more interesting than the fact that she died in a tunnel in Paris. It's weird. 2006, Edvard Munch's famous painting, The Scream, that was stolen on August 22nd, 2004, is recovered in a raid by Norwegian police. It was stolen during daylight hours when masked gunmen entered the museum in Oslo, Norway. They also stole Munch's Madonna painting. A bystander photographed the robbers and the Norwegian police arrested a suspect in connection with a the theft, but the paintings remained missing. Two years later, they recovered the paintings and they said were in better conditions than they expected. Movies released on August 31st. Now, this one's not a movie, but in 2004, Dog the Bounty Hunter premiered. Yeah, I, I liked that show for some reason for a long time. Then all of a sudden I started watching going, why am I watching this? This is stupid. Yeah, it was a pretty neat show for a while. I don't know. It's weird. 2005, The Constant Gardener's release. This was a good movie. Ralph Fiennes played a really good role. By the way, I watched this thing and he doesn't like be called Ralph. He prefers Ray. Don't know if that matters to anyone. I thought it was strange. But Rachel Weisz is in it. It's a really good movie. Really good movie. If you ever get a chance, watch that movie. Born on August 31st, 1949, Richard Gere. Richard Gere is an amazing actor. I remember, you know, decades ago in the 80s, he was in a movie called American Gigolo, which caught my attention because I always kind of thought Gigolo was a bad thing, like almost a curse word at the time, like, you know, the American slut would sound, you know, that's how I kind of felt it was. But anyway, the movie came out, great movie, and I remember one of the critics saying, you know, this is a great movie, Richard Gere obviously was hired for his pretty face, not his acting ability, then they went on to insinuate he'd be gone in a couple of years. Here he is, he's been in some amazing movies, including Pretty Woman, Looking for Mr. Goodbar, Yanks, like I said, American Gigolo, An Officer and a Gentleman, The Cotton Club, Power, Internal Affairs, Mr. Jones, Summersby, which was great, Primal Fear, First Night, The Jackal, and Red Corner, which were both really good movies, and then with Julia Roberts again in Runaway Bride. He's been in so many things, it's great. He's a great actor. I like him. 1973, Scott Niedermeyer, Canadian ice hockey player and coach. This is He was one of the best defensemen that ever played the game, honestly. He was that good. He uh, spent a majority of his career with the New Jersey Devil. Then at the end, he went to the Anaheim Ducks, which I think the first year he was with them, they were called the Mighty Ducks. But yeah, he was definitely one of the best defensemen I've ever seen play the game of hockey. Died on August 31st, 1973, John Ford, American film director. He was impressive. I mean, Stagecoach and a whole bunch of other movies. But what impresses me the most about this man, he actually filmed the landing at Normandy. He was also on Midway Island when the Japanese attacked it. He filmed that. This guy was not afraid of anything. 2013, we lost David Frost, English journalist and game show host. He rose to prominence during the satire boom of the UK when he was chosen to host the program That Was the Week That Was in 1962. He died at the age of 74 on board the cruise ship MS Queen Elizabeth due to heart attack. 2014, we lost Stan Goldberg, American illustrator. He was best known for his work on Archie Comics and then with Marvel Comics too. He helped design the original color scheme for Spider-Man, the Fantastic Four, and other major characters. He died at the age of 82 due to complications from a stroke two weeks prior. All right, that's August 31st. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up. Tell me what you thought in the comment section below. That actually helps the channel a lot, more than a like. Anyway, I appreciate you guys all watching my videos. Go out and be successful today and be nice to each other.